In a university, a group of students gathered in a classroom discussing a viral video. One student praised the video, describing it as cool. The video featured a winged man resembling a mutated superhero from action movies. Su Chen, however, found the video weird, questioning the purpose of a human with wings. As he expressed his thoughts to his friends, a girl suddenly hugged and kissed him. Su Chen, a popular figure in college with 5,000 Stargram followers, enjoyed his college life without compromising his values. Mihi then invited Su Chen for lunch, but he declined, feeling uncomfortable and excusing himself to go home. On his way back, he pondered over his newfound secret, vowing never to disclose it to anyone. Upon reaching home, he discovered a pair of wings on his back as he removed his shirt. Recalling how it all began with a dragonfly in middle school, he sprayed insect repellent on it, causing it to disintegrate into dust. Inhaling the dust, he passed out and awoke with wings on his back. Frightened yet determined to conquer his fear, Su Chan decided to conceal his wings and present a changed persona to his peers, especially Mi He, whom he couldn't bear to reveal the truth to. Mi He stood at the door after the doorbell rang, calling out to Su Chan. However, Su Chan hesitated to open the door, not wanting to face her. When he inquired about her presence, Mihi expressed her desire to have a drink with him, having been informed of his address by their mutual friends. Despite Su Chen's refusal of her invitation and insistence that she leave, Mihi remained resolute in her wish to spend time with him. Recalling their initial meeting, Mihi shared memories with Su Chan from behind the closed door, which left him feeling melancholic. Eventually, Su Chan relented, and they decided to go to the movies together. As they left, Su Chen was consumed by his inner turmoil and secrets. Suddenly, a man entered the room and ordered everyone to evacuate the building. A monstrous creature appeared and began attacking the people inside, causing chaos and fear. The creature specifically targeted Mihi, leading to her being pushed out of a window. Overwhelmed with fear and concern for Mihi, Su Chen overcame his own fears and jumped out of the window to rescue her. In a daring act, he revealed his true identity as a dragonfly to save Mihi from the monster. Onlookers below witnessed the extraordinary sight and captured the moment on camera. Mihi, shocked by the revelation, fainted upon seeing Su Chen's transformation. Meanwhile, as Su Chen rushed Mihi to the hospital, a mysterious girl approached the monster and warned it to remain hidden from sight. After a month, the students were still discussing the incident at the movie theater. Su Chen was surprised by people's reactions. The strange news was indeed serious, and it brought back memories of his childhood as an orphan with no friends. The lack of joy in his life was evident as he checked his Stargram account, realizing he was no longer popular. However, he found solace in Mihi, who remained by his side through thick and thin. Despite this, when he visited her at the hospital, Mihi's reaction was unexpected. She was terrified of him screaming about monsters, which deeply hurt Su Shan. Recalling their shared memories, he couldn't fathom why Maihi was now afraid of him and no longer wanted to see him. A month later, still feeling alone, Su Shan attempted suicide by jumping off a building, only to find himself floating and cursing his wings. Suddenly, a mysterious girl appeared and revealed a way for him to regain his human form, leaving him shocked. She explained that by fulfilling certain requirements, he could change his appearance using the jungle juice found in insect spray. Taking him to the College Nest campus, the girl offered him a chance at normalcy. Meanwhile, the half-monster mantis man who had attacked humans at the movie theater was captured and restrained by guards. Spotting Su Chen, the monster licked his lips in anticipation, eager to feast on him once more. Su Chen found himself at the College Nest campus where he was taken aback by the sight of numerous individuals like himself. He had never imagined that such a place existed in Korea. Regardless of age, there were various types of half-monster humans present. All the people there, including Su Chen, had been infected. Despite being referred to as a campus, it functioned as a facility designed to safeguard individuals like them. Su Chan was astonished by what he saw at the campus, where everyone had been infected by jungle juice. While exploring the area, he encountered an elderly man who was consuming insects, a sight that struck him as peculiar. The man noticed Su Chan and inquired about his identity. 
Subsequently, the elderly man lifted his shirt to reveal Su Chan's dragonfly wings. He reassured Su Chan that there was no need to conceal his wings. In response, Su Chen expressed his intention to rid himself of the dragonfly wings and departed, leaving the smiling man behind, who referred to Su Chen as a pitiful child. Later on, Su Chen met the university professor Nest, who expressed gratitude for bringing him to the campus. The professor proceeded to demonstrate how one could revert to being a normal human. They watched video clips from a university graduation ceremony, with the final segment featuring the top graduate making a Cinderella promise. In the video, the monster consumed a substance and transformed into a regular human, much to Suchin's surprise. He inquired about this phenomenon, to which the professor explained that they had conducted research on jungle juice and developed a solution named Cinderella. Entomology professor John visited Professor Ma Do Hyun to inquire about enrollment. Professor John Jai revealed that the enrollment process had begun and everyone was using their own strategies to survive. In the end, only the strongest would be able to enroll in the courses. Su Chen was intrigued by what was happening. A young honeybee boy approached him and explained that the enrollment process was different here. The professors were hiding in the mountains, and the students had to find them to enroll in their courses. The professors would distribute USB drives to the first 16 students who found them and plugged them into their laptops for enrollment. Both of them wished each other the best of luck. As they set out to find their professor, Su Chen took to the skies and quickly located the flag in the mountains, while others were engaged in a struggle for the USB drives. Ignoring the chaos, he flew to find Professor Doyle and eventually succeeded. The professor commended his swift flight strategy and handed him the last USB drive, instructing him to return to the lab and plug it into the laptop, warning him not to lose it. Su Chen was elated as he was now one step closer to becoming a normal human being. Professor Doyon sent out a message that anyone in possession of a USB drive was now a target for everyone. Another young honey bee boy came to his rescue, saving him from the other students. Su Chan expressed his gratitude, but the boy betrayed him and stole his USB drive. Determined, Su Chen fought back to retrieve his drive, while the student with the USB drive completed the enrollment process. He struggled to retrieve his USB, even resorting to physical force against the boys who had taken it. Despite the chaos, he hesitated between saving the boy or chasing the girl who had his drive. In the end, he chose to save the boy. Losing his USB left him disoriented, and he passed out. Upon waking up, Professor Junjai handed him a paper to recycle. Su Chan felt overwhelmed by the situation and began to curse, feeling angry and confused. However, he was surprised to find a USB hidden in the paper. With only five minutes left for registration, Professor Junjai urged him to hurry. Su Chan encountered obstacles on his way to registration, but was saved by fellow students Doi Chan and Hayes Young Cha, who had been instructed by Professor Doyon to help him. Upon arriving at the designated time, Su Chen promptly completed his enrollment and immediately received the class orientation notice. However, his day took a turn when the university guard asked him to leave due to his lack of a student ID. Coincidentally, Park Hee Jin arrived with her student ID, and together they made their way to the lecture hall. Much to Su Chan's surprise, everyone in the class recognized him as the Dragonfly Man from a previous cinema incident. Despite teasing Hee Jin about her actions a month ago, she explained the difficulty of erasing all evidence but Huyen intervened and assured that it was not an issue. He encouraged Su Chen, recognizing his greatness. Suddenly, a classmate from the back row engaged in a fight with Hayasio, intimidating and threatening others in the group over the valedictorian topic. He even went as far as snatching their student IDs to prevent them from attending class. Su Chen intervened, but was struck by one of the group members with a stick. Eventually, he found himself at the Nest Park University Healthcare Center with Hyos Young, where He Jin promised to help him obtain a replacement ID so he could rest. On the contrary, Park He Jin requested the group to return their identification cards. They engaged in a heated altercation with her and even contemplated harming her, but ultimately, Su Chan came to her rescue. The confrontation between Su Chan and the leader of the monster group commences. 
Huygen intervenes and prevents them from fighting in the lake as the opponent is subdued by water bugs. Huygen proceeds to drag the opponent into the water, intending to finish him off while teasing him with the student ID. She explains to him that they only wish to fight with her because she belongs to a higher social class. Last year, she had informed him that the situation was his responsibility and advised him to leave, but Suchin adamantly refused to abandon her, and Hyos Young also joined them. He returned their IDs, and Suchin retreated to his room. He felt elated upon discovering that Hughes Young was his roommate. Meanwhile, in a remote mountainous area, Gay and the woman engaged in a conversation with the boy who had lost the fight, discussing the professor's top student. The woman expressed anger towards the boy for his defeat and failure to eliminate Suchin. Subsequently, she killed the man. Suchin desired to learn more about his esteemed professor, John Jai, and was informed by them that a minor test had been conducted to assess the student's performance in the final class. Now, everyone finds themselves unexpectedly gathered in the university's open training ground. Su Chan was taken aback by the sudden rush of students towards He Jin, who informed her that it was a practical combat for insects, a mandatory course for their major. This particular subject was taught by Professor Jun. Professor John Jai explained that the first test was a game of hide and seek. In order to pass, everyone had to save themselves, as those who were caught would fail the exam. The course began, and they all started running. Meanwhile, in a remote underground sector of the campus, a mysterious girl arrived and killed the guard to free her boss. The little honeybee boy came to the rescue, using the professor's ID to access the room. The girl opened the door and released the monster. Unfortunately, the monster devoured the honeybee boy. On the other hand, Su Chan, Park Hee Jin, and Haya Siong ran for an hour, exhausted from their continuous sprinting. As they ran, they realized that the professor had captured most of the other students who were attempting to escape. Hyacian warned them to remain quiet, as the professor was nearby. Fiona and another girl stumbled and fell while running. The professor approached, intending to harm them, but Suchin arrived just in time to stop him. They made a deal. If the professor allowed Suchin to hit him for an hour, he would spare everyone else from being expelled. However, if Suchin failed to land a hit, all would face expulsion. Suchin attempted to strike, but despite his best efforts, he couldn't lay a hand on Professor John. Professor Jai observed him utilizing all his skills, unaware that Suchin believed the professor was also using his own abilities. Suchin disclosed that he too possessed powers, but was unable to access them due to certain side effects at his age. He was informed that he needed to acknowledge his abilities in order to unleash them. Prior to this, Suchin had to come to terms with the fact that he was an insect. He probed his memory, questioning how he could come to terms with the fact that he had transformed into a monster. Suddenly, Gayen began applauding, remarking that professors always possessed a unique talent, with everyone except Suchin being taken aback by his actions. He lashed out at Yona Hyacian in anger, but Gaian intervened by poisoning him, causing him to collapse. Suchin was left bewildered by the turn of events, feeling a sense of deja vu from the attack at the movie theater where the monster had injured Professor John Jai. He experienced the same sense of helplessness once more. They abducted Hyos Young and departed. Despite his desire to intervene, the professor restrained him, citing the danger they posed. Suchan, however, defied him and flew off to rescue He Jin. In this chapter, Su Chan engages in a fight with the monster, but fails to defeat it due to his sturdy frame, resulting in self-inflicted injuries. The mysterious girl instructs the monster to kill them in order to escape before the nest pets discover them. Meanwhile, Hyacian experiences a dream where someone calls his name, waking him up. However, he finds himself unable to move his body. He witnesses a battle between the girl, the monster, and himself, but realizes that he is no match for their strength. As they prepare to kill him, Hyacian summons all his strength and manages to save himself. He grabs hold of the girl, and they start flying at a rapid pace. The girl informs the monster that they have to move, despite it being a pity. The monster warns them that its sense of their presence still lingers, making it possible for it to track them down. Suchan advises Hayus Young not to intervene, explaining that this is a lesson for today's class. Sometimes, when unable to defeat their opponent, 
they must flee. Su Chan reveals that they captured him because he is a monster who has killed many people, and they have a plan to capture him once again. Suddenly, the smell of the monster becomes stronger, and Su Chan swiftly appears from behind, restraining the mysterious girl with twigs. He then punches the monster and instructs Hughes Young to find something that can penetrate its tough skeleton. Hughes Young retrieves a saw belonging to the professor, and Su Chan prepares to use it to cut the monster. Su Chan effortlessly sliced through the monster with a single handed saw. Yang felt a surge of happiness as their plan successfully worked while the monster seethed with anger and shouted at them for daring to hunt him down. However, their triumph was short-lived as the saw suddenly stopped working, and the monster seized the opportunity to destroy it. Now, both Su Chen and Yang engaged in a fierce battle with the monster, but despite their efforts, they couldn't defeat it. The monster was on the verge of killing Su Chan when suddenly Professor Junjai appeared and saved him. The professor's healing abilities were evident as he received treatment services from the nest. He expressed his concern for them, but also commended their handling of the monster. Utilizing his insect abilities, the professor delivered a powerful blow to the monster. As Suchin observed smoke emanating from the professor, he explained that it was a manifestation of her true power and the effect of the jungle juice. However, he cautioned that destroying his ability could result in him losing his power. The only way to prevent this was for Suchin to fully master her powers as quickly as possible. After some time, they safely returned to the campus, where they discussed Gayen and his whereabouts at the healthcare center. As night fell, Hayashian ventured towards the forest, only to be intercepted and manipulated by Gayen. Yet once again, Professor John Jai came to the rescue and saved him. Su Chan followed Hayashian into the forest and discovered that he was with Professor John Jai. He observes a commotion. The professor engages him in a conversation about the past due to their acquaintance. The student of Professor Nest becomes upset by his nonsensical behavior and strikes her. Professor Doyan Ma intervenes and halts the altercation. Professor John informs him that she is working for someone. Professor Doyan advises him to release her and trail her to uncover the true culprit. She mentions she will withdraw for now, but will return to eliminate them all. Subsequently, an unexpected windfall occurs, leading them back to the campus. Along the journey, Professor Jun emphasizes the importance of keeping the events confidential, and he agrees under the condition that he teaches him how to harness his abilities, aspiring to enhance his strength. A few days later, during a meal in the cafeteria, Hugen pointed out a girl named Noah. She assists in research by skipping classes to work in the lab and practicing for group assignments with Suchin, Hyos, Young, Park, Heejin, and Doa. They were planning to complete their assignment in a few days when the assistant teacher informed Professor John Jay that the group was working on the assignment, but there was an emergency as one of them had died in the lecture hall. Professor John Jay then explained to everyone that their task was to find the spray bottle which was the key to the Cinderella solution, hidden somewhere in the province. If the group managed to locate the bottle, they would receive extra points. They split into teams and began searching for the elusive bottle. Despite facing challenges with disrespectful partners, they persevered in their search. However, when they reached Yang's apartment where the bottle was supposed to be, they discovered that it had been stolen. Disheartened, they decided to search the city both online and in stores, but to no avail. The group grew weary from their fruitless efforts. He desired to return to a state of normalcy. When asked if it was for the girl, or if she was his girlfriend, Suchin burst into laughter before admitting she was correct. He longed for her once more and yearned to regain normalcy, expressing his gratitude towards her. As Suchin's phone rang, he answered to Hayasion, who was elated to have discovered a company that produced jungle juice. After acquiring numerous bottles, he shared their location and proceeded there. Upon arrival at the peculiar place, they suspected it might be a trap, yet ventured inside the building where the bottles were located. Suddenly, an assailant targeted Hei Jin, resulting in her injury. Su Chan always found himself in solitude, having lost his parents at birth and then his grandmother passing away. He believed he would eventually grow accustomed to bidding farewell, but he found himself unable to do so when it came to Hewitt Jim. 
Engaging in a battle with the formidable monster Tawny Earwig, Suchin attempted to deliver a powerful blow, only to realize that the monster's tough exoskeleton made it a challenging opponent to defeat. The monster revealed that its strength stemmed from consuming another insect, likening it to a delicacy. When asked if Suchan had ever consumed one, he replied that he was merely waiting for prey, which he had now found. Enraged, Suchan initiated another round of combat, persisting despite being repeatedly knocked down by the monster. Despite his failed attempts to outwit the monster, Park Heejin suddenly arrived and managed to overpower the creature using his skills and strength. As Park Heejin's backstory unfolded, it was revealed that he lived in poverty, residing in a dimly lit, cramped basement at the age of 17 while attending high school. Bullied by classmates due to their financial struggles, Park Heejin's situation took a turn for the better when his brother, Park Jeonjin, intervened and protected him from harm. Grateful for his brother's unwavering support, Park Heejin returned home to find him attempting to eliminate pests, only to realize they had run out of bug spray. Her brother proposed that they purchase jungle juice, a product highly praised by many for its effectiveness in killing various insects. He made sure to cater to her every need, allowing her to pursue her dreams of attending college. Unfortunately, her brother passed away due to exhaustion, leaving her to face poverty alone. Feeling devastated, she was targeted by her classmates, who humiliated her by throwing cockroaches at her. In her basement, she resorted to using bug spray to eliminate the pests, eventually transforming into a bug woman. When asked about her injuries by Park Heejin, she simply replied that she was fine, showcasing her resilience and agility. However, a monster taunted her about her financial struggles, leading to a fierce battle where the monster ultimately killed her. Su Chan, witnessing her demise, was filled with anger and sorrow. As he stood up, his wings illuminated, revealing his monstrous nature. Surprised by his own actions, he realized that there was a way to evolve and grow stronger without resorting to feeding on others. With newfound strength, he attacked the monster, overpowering it and causing it to plead for mercy. Remembering his training with Professor John Jai, Suchin unleashed his full potential, defeating the monster and ending its life. Overwhelmed by the intense battle, he collapsed, victorious, but exhausted. Begins with the sudden arrival of a mysterious man. He found Suchin attractive and wanted to keep him for himself, but ultimately left him. As Nest tracks a pest signal to the building, they encounter Suchin at the entrance of the campus, desperately asking for help as he holds Hui Jin in his arms. Professor John Jai arrives and inquiries about the situation. He begins scolding Suchan but is interrupted by Professor Han Yong Yu, who urges him to be more understanding and composed. Professor Yu examines Hui Jin and instructs Su Chan to bring him down. Suddenly, Professor Yu's hand starts glowing, prompting Su Chan to question what she is doing. The assistant professor reveals that Professor Yu possesses rare healing powers. Su Chan asks if this means she can bring Hui Jin back to life, to which the professor explains that her abilities allow her to heal wounds, but not revive the dead. He apologizes to Su Chan, informing him that Park Hee Jin has passed away. The medical staff is instructed to bring her body, and as Su Chan embraces her in tears, he suddenly feels her breathing. It is revealed that Hee Jin, who had transformed from a cockroach-like creature into an adult form, was brought back to life by the light of Su Chan's return. Overjoyed, he tightly embraces her, relieved that she is safe. Professor John Jay informed the students during the art class that none of them were successful in locating a single bottle of jungle juice. He mentioned that the reason behind the scarcity of jungle juice was due to another group of bug people who were on a mission to hoard the jungle juice for themselves. These bug people were reportedly ambushing unsuspecting individuals, spraying them, and transforming them into bug people without their consent. This posed a serious threat to the community, according to him. Moving forward, Professor John Jay stated that the students would now be assigned tasks 
that focused on real combat scenarios. He warned them about the potential dangers, reminding them of the critical injuries or even death that could result from such tasks. Emphasizing the high risk involved, he explained that the grades they would receive would reflect this risk. Despite giving them the option to opt out of the subject, he noted that everyone chose to continue. With that, he concluded the day's session and announced the commencement of the Nest Student Orientation Night. The atmosphere was lively as everyone enjoyed their meal. Doa found herself engaged in a flirtatious conversation with Hayasian when suddenly a boy named Jun Hyung Lee approached her. He offered her a drink and whisked her away from the room. However, something seemed off about Jun Hyung. He had tied up and mistreated Do Hua, who was unconscious at the time. Just as things were escalating, a breeder intervened and stopped Jun Hyung. It turned out that the breeder had sent someone to kidnap Do Hua because she was a valuable specimen that he had nurtured for a long time. Meanwhile, Su Chen questioned Jun Hyung about his actions. However, Jun Hyung's girlfriend stepped in, and the two engaged in a heated argument. Jun Hyung utilized his unique ability, using his fur with spikes, to overpower her. He declared that Doa would be leaving with him, as the nest was not a suitable place for her. Once they left, she would never return. Despite Su Chen's attempts to intervene, he was unable to stop Jun Hyung, as he was physically stronger and even had the ability to shoot his hair. Meanwhile, everyone else at the orientation party enjoyed themselves, unaware of the events unfolding, but curious about what had transpired between Su Chan and Jun Hyung. Hya Kion entered the scene and expressed his concern about not having seen Doa for an hour. He couldn't seem to locate her. A random girl sitting nearby informed them that a boy had taken her away while Su Chan and Jun Hilm were still fighting. Unable to defeat Jun Yung, Su Chan resorted to injecting him with a sedative, causing him to pass out. When he regained consciousness, he found himself in a dark room with Doa sleeping beside him. Su Chan was worried about breaking curfew and missing their class, and he scolded Jen Hill for their actions, despite Su Chan's disagreement. After a while, a young baby girl named Hiram arrived and informed them that it was time for lunch. Curious, he inquired about where she had taken them. Noah informed him that they were at the Angel Orphanage. As they grew up, the children would often ask her questions about tales, to which she would reply that it was merely a toy. One day, she ran away from an old lady who happened to be the director of the Angel Orphanage. The old lady approached Su Shan and asked him about his sleeping habits. She mentioned that she washed his clothes and informed him that Jun Hyung had brought him and Prayer to the orphanage the previous night. She also revealed that Jan Yong and Prayer had grown up in the orphanage. This explained why she didn't reject him. Curious about Do Hua's current life, he asked her about it, as he was surprised when she shared her strange story with him. Meanwhile, Prayer recalled his memories and remembered how his father used to beat him. The old lady advised him to return to the campus. Suddenly, Yarim appeared and invited Su Chan to play with him. He handed his drawing book to Su Chan. Unbeknownst to them, the old lady and the caretaker were in the basement, conducting an experiment to transform Yarim into a human insect. On their way to the campus, Su Chan noticed something peculiar in Yarim's drawing book. He decided to return to the orphanage and headed straight to the basement. Upon arrival, he witnessed the old lady preparing to conduct her experiments. Filled with anger at the thought of innocent children's lives being destroyed, he intervened and stopped her. A fight ensued between him and the old lady. To his surprise, he discovered that he too possessed the abilities of a bugman. Suddenly, numerous bugmen appeared and began sucking Su Chan's blood. Meanwhile, Dohua sat in the room when Johnny Young entered with some items. She expressed her unease, sensing strange vibes. He informed her about a lab in the basement that was transforming the children into bug men. She was taken aback when she asked him if he recalled their childhood together. He appeared delicate, and back then, the only solution to assist him was to transform him into a bug man. He mentioned that she seemed resilient 
and it was crucial for the children to endure in this world. He suggested that she should accompany him on this quest because he served a higher power who could bring that world to fruition. Disregarding Nest, she was stunned by his words and struck him. Sushan was battling for survival. The elderly monster woman, Yaram, and her loyal followers initiated their attack. Although all of them were remarkably swift, Yaram proved to be the fastest, overpowering, and defeating them all. Meanwhile, Dohua and Gen Hill engaged in their own battle, but Yaram refused to align herself with Gen Hill's plan. Utilizing her defensive mechanisms, she attempted to defeat him, but her efforts were in vain due to his resilient skeleton. Nevertheless, she managed to successfully defeat him. While the two adversaries fought, the laboratory assistant managed to escape with Jerem in the cave bus. Yaram pursued them, and with great force, she lifted the bus and struck it forcefully. She warned that if the child was not inside the bus, she would crush it once again. Jun Hyun intervened and confronted her, only to be defeated once more. Yarom explained that it was better for the orphaned child to possess this power rather than having nothing at all. It was a harsh reality, and for the first time, she revealed her fangs and bit him. The poison from his bite was enough to render her unconscious. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Revenue Jun Hyung confessed that he never expected to be able to defeat them all. However, both of them were well aware of how this fight would ultimately conclude. He admitted that he couldn't even touch him due to Su Chan's venomous stinger, and Jan Hyung initiated the fight. Despite Jun Hyung's challenge that he could never defeat him, Jan Hyung proved him wrong and attacked him with full force. When he acquires the glasses from the bus, they function as a shield against the wind, dust, and anything that could harm his eyes. Now, Su Chan is holding him and stabs him. John Hyung attempts to poison him with his fangs, but Su Chan manages to save herself from a short distance. Jun Hyung warns him not to interfere, as he has a mission to complete. He shares the hardships of his childhood, where his mother struggled to make ends meet. Unfortunately, some criminals took his mother's life for money, and he regrets not being able to save her. Life, he believes, is a tragedy without power. Hence, he aims to help children by transforming them into humans. Insect John. Helmet uses his stinger to attack them, but Sushan shields Dohua, revealing that Noah has developed immunity to the stinger. Sushan expresses her distress, stating that endangering children will not bring happiness. Yarim arrives and shields Sushan, preparing to confront Jun Hill. He checks on Yarim's well being and inquires about her wound. Yarim assures him she is fine and expresses gratitude for saving her life. She plans to inform the nest about the incident and seek their assistance. In an unexpected moment, she suddenly came to the realization that Noah was nowhere to be found. He was taken aback when he sensed a presence behind him, but when he turned around, the person had vanished. He could only hear the voice of John Hyung, who informed him that the voice belonged to the rancher transporter. Suddenly, both of them spotted him. He informed Jun Hyung that the breeder was aware that he would fail to persuade them, which was why he had sent him to retrieve Dohua. The plan was to train her through feeding, but Jun Hyung assured him that he would succeed in convincing her to join their cause. He suggested putting her down and returning her to the breeder, but he chose to leave her behind. He felt a deep sadness for losing Su Chan and Jun Hyung's team in their search for Dohua who was currently bound by a rope. The breeder expressed his desire for her to become a part of his group. He declined the rancher's offer, and instead, the rancher presented him with food made from insect human flesh. He forcefully tried to make him eat it, hoping to turn him into a monster, as Injun Hill had achieved in the past. However, he was saved in the nick of time by Gay and Sin, who appeared alongside a lavender-haired male. He was astonished to see them. Jun Hyung revealed that Su Chan's prayer had been embedded in his neck, allowing them to control and manipulate him through Gay and Sin's abilities. Jun Hyung expressed his anger towards the rancher, reminding him of his promise not to harm any orphanages. 
People advised him to watch a video of little kids being trained to feed before engaging in a fight. They suggested that he could quickly train them to become excellent hunting dogs. However, John Hyong became angry and struck him forcefully. Suddenly, Noah intervened and blocked John's attack as he was being controlled by Gaia. Despite her growing strength from a combination of her complex and gainous complex, she managed to break free from the breeder's grasp and launched a powerful counterattack. The rancher struggled to control her due to her swift and aggressive nature, so he turned on the sprinklers. Sushan, unable to fly due to the weight of the water on her wings, had her breathing obstructed by water bubbles created by the rancher. Eventually, she lost consciousness while Hui Jin encountered Sierra, despite John Hill's consecutive attacks. Unable to defend herself any longer, Guyan felt a sense of satisfaction as Su Chan utilized all her abilities. She told Jun Hyung that he should give up, as he could no longer save her. As soon as he began to feed, he would relinquish his humanity. Ultimately, it didn't matter at all. The breeder informed him that he would establish a new world where only truly capable specimens would remain. Therefore, there would be no need to save humanity, since there wouldn't be any humans in the future. Despite this, he attempted his final move to prevent Nu from feeding with his stinger, but Gayan abruptly halted his aim. Su Chan then swooped in and snatched the piece of meat. Flying higher than where the breeder was, Su Chan eluded capture. He informed the breeder that he was not an expert in his abilities and couldn't defeat him. Upon arriving to pray, Jun Hyung taught him the trick to attack, reminding him of his advice to use his entire body as bullets for the assault. Su Chan knew it was a risky move, but he had to take down the breeder in one shot. Somehow, he succeeded, but after some time, the breeder returned with more strength and confined him in the aquarium. Su Chan panicked, realizing there was no escape from the fishbowl. He was now a prisoner in the breeder's grasp. The breeder warned him that he would suffocate and lose consciousness, only to awaken and continue training with Noah. Su Chan began to scream, not wanting to become a monster. Suddenly, Park Hee Jin arrived and rescued him. To his surprise, Park Hee Jin revealed that Agent Nest had initiated a search as soon as he informed the professor that the two of them were missing. A few hours before, Agent Nest was trailing Gan, but suddenly lost sight of him. The agent reported back to the school, but fortunately he spotted a little girl with a jacket you. She disclosed all the information to me, ensuring her safety. Unexpectedly, Dokwa launched an attack on them. Su Chan informs Park Hee Jin that they are controlling it with a certain type of venom, leading to a confrontation between Do Wa and Hui Jin. Meanwhile, Breeder once again restrains him with his web, and Supreme Yang and Hyona arrive to defend their friends. Sin intends to eliminate them all, but just in time, Professor John Jai appears unexpectedly. Professor Jai informs him that he has come here to put an end to all of this, as he is interfering in the lives of his students. They engage in a fight, and the rancher tells Guyan that it is enough for today, and they must return to the ranch. The transporter arrives and escorts the rancher, while Guyan informs the professor that he was sent here today because he sent Guyan away. Now, she can take the orphan and jungle juice with her. The professor discovers that she is the leader of the hidden army, allowing him to track her. The professor faces a complex attack with intense heat spreading around. Suddenly, the rancher transforms into a gigantic centipede and mentions that he had planned to devour them, but he can wait for another time as he has other matters to attend to. He then digs a tunnel and escapes. Afterward, everyone safely returns to the nest. Noah's recovery was swift according to the lab tests, while the other students relocated to another center under the nest board of director's arrangement. At the hospital, John Hilmer entered and began shouting at John Hill, causing a commotion. Bella informed Huygen about a humorous incident involving Jun Hill getting drunk during orientation and falling asleep, only to wake up with Su Chun, which made him smile. Park Hee Jin, feeling upset, left the room, but later approached Su Chun's room and questioned if she had slept with Noah. Frightened, he explained the situation to her in desperation and expressed gratitude for her constant support. The following day, the professor's plan involved a meeting with Professor John Jai and Professor Han Yong. On behalf of the dean, 
He informed Nest that they would actively pursue the breeder and their organization, preparing for a full-scale war. He revealed that he obtained information about them from Jun Hyung during the investigation and showed a video where the breeder brought all the insect men to the lab territory. Professor Ma instructed Professor John Jay to form a group of students to investigate the lab's location on Black Island. Meanwhile, Park Heejin and Suchan were dining at a restaurant when he inquired about the whereabouts of the tallest young boy. She informed him that he had gone to visit his parents. Suddenly, Fiona and Dawn arrived and teased them, assuming they were dating. He planned to acquire some instruments that could enhance their strength. When they arrived at the laboratory, they signed in and requested the lab assistant to create special glasses for them. Back at home, the pet shop employee, Gayen, was furious with the breeder for preventing him from confronting Professor John Jai, despite being warned. The breeder managed to calm him down and prepared a cup of tea. Gayen expressed his desire to harm the professor and was eager to learn about an incident that occurred five years ago. The breeder and his assistant assured Gayen that they would support him in any way possible. Meanwhile, Professor Junjai informed the class about a laboratory located on Black Island called the Pet Shop, where breeders experimented on insect-human hybrids. The students were tasked with disguising themselves as tourists to locate the high place. To select students for this mission, a group tournament was organized due to the dangerous nature of the task. Upon learning about the opportunity to earn a grade by conquering enemy territory, excitement filled the room. Su Chan was determined to emerge victorious in the group tournament alongside Huygen. Professor Jun Jai emphasized the importance of following the tournament rules strictly. The students were divided into four teams, each consisting of four members. In the first match between Team A and Team B, the objective was to capture the opposing team's flag. Su Chan and Huygen were assigned to retrieve the flag, while Dowa and Hayashian were tasked with defending their own flag. The intense battle commenced with Hyona and Dawn leading the charge. Dawn displayed immense strength as she swiftly attacked Su Chan and Hui Jin. To her surprise, their skills were akin to a mace, capable of capturing their prey. But their physical bodies were weak. Dawn attempted to tear off their jacket, but young Hyona intervened and used her silk thread to tightly bind it. Dante informed Yona that if they handcuffed one of them, they would learn the location of their base. Suddenly, Park Hee Jin utilized her weapon, resembling spikes of destruction, to disable Dawn's iron mace. Su Chan used his expertise to defeat Dawn and successfully handcuff her, subsequently revealing the location of Group B's base. Meanwhile, in class, the professor analyzed their skills through videos. Fiona became frightened and attempted to flee, but she slipped and fell from the top of the mountain. Park Hee-jin came to her rescue, but Fiona took advantage of her helpful nature and handcuffed her. Now, the location of Team A was exposed, and it was time to select the opposing team's flag. As the phone rang, Hayasian answered and informed him that the team had discovered their location, making it impossible for him to save their flag. He explained that he had believed they had lost, but suddenly, Su Shan noticed a box and informed him that they hadn't lost after all. However, the professor had observed everything from the classroom. Su Chan wanted to open the box, but Hui Jin stopped him, stating that it was not suitable for Young to handle and should be kept for future use. He got eliminated, so he headed back to the main campus to continue the game. Meanwhile, Doa arrived just in time to rescue Flack. A fierce battle ensued between Doa and the opposing team member Johanna, who had a rhinoceros beetle complex. Another member of the opposing team, Rita Huang, joined the fight, throwing her scales which caused an allergic reaction on the skin. However, her scales proved ineffective due to her hard skeleton. The villain attempted to destroy her, but she fought back using her defense mechanism. Hiona rushed towards her base to defend her, but the game took a turn, and Timo managed to capture the flag of the opposing team, securing victory. During the class discussion, the topic of conversation shifted towards Group A's victory. Hyasiong couldn't help but feel a sense of sadness, as he believed that he hadn't contributed much to their success. On the other hand, Group D emerged victorious in their match. When Hyasiong mentioned this to a member of Group D named Jiang Han Yu, he expressed admiration for their team, 
despite the unfortunate incident involving a girl from their group being sent to the emergency room. Chiang Han Yu then approached Hai Asiong and intentionally triggered his weak point, causing him to feel unsettled. As the final tournament commenced between Group A and Group D, a member of Group D named Hana Sion used her complex on the girls from Group A, leaving them both surprised and saddened. Half of Group A's team left the match as soon as it began, while the remaining members were restrained with flags. Hyus Young, a member of Group A, was told by Hana Sion to go and fight, but he disagreed and instead went in search of Team D. He wanted to prove himself stronger, as he believed he had done very little for his own group in the previous round. Suddenly, a member of Group D named Majin Gu appeared and engaged in a fight with Haya Seal. Majin Gu managed to strike him and handcuff him, resulting in the elimination of Group D's base. To his surprise, Majin Gu discovered that there was nothing but weeds at Group D's base. Just as he was processing this revelation, the earth suddenly exploded, causing him to fall. Shang Hun came to his aid and he was astonished by their ability to cause such destruction. Another member of Group D, Yun Ji Jiang, joined the fight. They all began to battle, and Haya Siong found himself unable to defeat them. Suddenly, blood started flowing from his eyes, impairing his vision completely. Group D previously performed the same action, with the female professor warning him not to cause any serious harm. They successfully defeated Hayasion and restrained him with handcuffs. However, at that moment, Sushan arrived and took the handcuffs from them. Ten minutes ago, Suchin witnessed Hayasion revealing the location of Group D's basement while the two girls were still unconscious. Thinking that he should assist Hayasion, Suchin decided to go to the location. He opened a box and put on a pair of special glasses, which provided him with exceptional clarity. Earlier that morning, he had obtained these glasses when he visited the laboratory. The lab assistant informed him that the technician had added an additional feature to the glasses. They now had a hexagonal grating and a dial that enhanced his ability to see multiple compounds. As he adjusted the dial, everything became crystal clear. He quickly rushed to help Hyacian, and upon reaching the base, he encountered Haya Siong, who had been injured by Shang Hun's fire ant complex. Shang Hun sprayed fire, which could potentially harm the eyes, but fortunately, Su Chan was wearing protective goggles that saved him. He retaliated and nearly defeated Haya Seong. Suddenly, Hana covered the cave entrance from the outside, plunging it into darkness. Unable to see anything, except for Chan Hankan, who possessed ant like abilities, Su Chan considered taking to the air. However, Yunji prevented him from doing so. A fierce battle ensued between them but the glasses aided Su Chan by providing clear vision in the darkness. Utilizing his powers, he emerged from the cave and defeated Chang Han, rendering him unconscious. Hana and Hanji attempted to secure the flag but were unsuccessful. Ultimately, Su Chan obtained the flag. The professor declared the tournament winner and brought it to a close, only to realize that he had inadvertently left the young boy alone in the cave. Hyacian, feeling helpless for both his group and himself, cursed his own inability. When the professor checked on him, he reassured Hayashian that the effects would wear off eventually and congratulated him on his victory. Hayashian was surprised and slightly envious, as he never expected Suchin to defeat three opponents single-handedly. Suchan approached him to ask if he was all right, but Professor John instructed him to return to the lecture hall immediately. The professor reminded Hayes Young that no matter how skilled he was, there would always be someone better, emphasizing that the issue was his lack of effort. Professor Jun advised him to seek treatment, gather his belongings for the journey, and rejoin the class. The group at the dormitory is having a party. Fiona informs Su Chan and Park Hee Jin that she can make clothes for them. A few days later, they all head to Black Island in search of a lab. While at the pet shop, they unexpectedly encounter Hyun Bin Ju, who is a teaching assistant. She came to the dormitory for their safety and brought clothes for them as a gift from Fiona. Fiona instructs them to change into the provided clothes at Black Island Beach. To avoid suspicion, everyone wears swimsuits to blend in with the tourists. Park Hee Jin feels uneasy in her swimsuit, but Noah reassures her that she looks good. They all go to the beach and have a great time, 
pretending to be normal tourists. While enjoying themselves, they notice someone observing them with a telescope. They suspect that the person might be an employee of the island. Later, they return to the dormitory to rest and plan for the search the next day. Hyacian quickly realizes that Hughes Young is missing from the room. Meanwhile, an old man sits by the beach, and Hyacian approaches him to inquire about the pet shop's location. The old man turns out to be his grandson, and a stranger had mistaken him for his own lost grandson. Hyacian takes the old man to his house and berates himself once again. Upon a sudden discovery of something peculiar through the telescope, Hyacian was urgently sought after, while a boy arrived at Black Island and called out to him. Pius Young, who had been dreaming about his football career, felt betrayed by his team members, transforming into a bug man and abandoning his passion as he believed he was no longer competent. Su Chan informed Professor John that they did not want him on their team, only to awaken and realize it was all a dream. Despite their continued search and scouting efforts across the island, no clues were found. One evening they gathered together, with Doa missing Hyacian's presence. Meanwhile, Hyacian encountered an old man on the beach waiting for his grandson, urging her to head home due to the cold. Initially upset, she eventually consoled and accompanied the old man. Upon returning to his house, he left abruptly, but not before Hyacian noticed his smartphone with a low battery. After charging it, she stumbled upon something incredibly strange on the device, prompting her to rush and inform the others. However, they were met with a monster outside the house, leading to a fierce battle. As suspicions of Pet Shop's presence on the island arose, Doa awaited Hyacian on the beach, only to be approached by strangers. Professor Ju warned them about Pet Shop's gruesome acts, turning individuals into monstrous beings devoid of humanity. He advised them to flee if they ever encountered such creatures, hoping they would never have to face them. While Hyos Young was engaged in battle with the monster, his strength was so remarkable that he initially decided to flee with the evidence. However, upon realizing that the old man was left alone, he made the courageous choice to return and save him. Meanwhile, Doa was not in any immediate danger. In the dormitory, Hyunbin attempted to contact Hayes Young, but unfortunately he had left his phone behind in the dormitory that they both had misplaced. The confrontation between Hyos Young and the monster reignited, with Hyos Young putting forth his best effort. Despite his valiant attempts, he was ultimately unable to overcome the creature as he fell victim to its poisonous sting, leaving him blinded and wounded. The monster seized the opportunity and captured him, prompting Hyos Young to once again berate himself. However, this time, he was determined not to succumb to defeat not only for his own sake, but also for the sake of his team. Utilizing his defensive skills, he managed to vanquish the monster and secure victory. This triumph served as evidence of his growth and brought him great joy. Playing for his current team, he demonstrated his prowess by slicing through the monster's claws with his transformed legs, now resembling swords. The moment he was bitten, his body underwent a transformation that enabled him to endure harsh conditions, resulting in the acquisition of a new defense mechanism. Strengthened by this development, he engaged in battle at full strength, nearly delivering the final blow to the monster. However, his victory was nearly thwarted when an old man intervened, throwing a bottle of acid at the monster. As the monster turned its attention towards the old man, Hyos Young rushed to his aid, only to have the monster strike him on the shoulder, causing him to lose consciousness, believing that everything now rested in Su Chen's hands. On the contrary, Hyunbin expressed her unease as both Doa and Hyos Young had gone missing. She advised the others to search for them individually and inform her if they found either of them or if any incidents occurred. After an hour, Su Chen stumbled upon a smartphone and discovered a note on it regarding the pet shop. Just then, an elderly man approached him and revealed that he had saved the ultimate right. Suchin hurriedly made his way to Black Island Wharf, following the instructions in the note, realizing that the underwater message was sent from the same location where Noah's phone was last seen. Unexpectedly, a boy appeared. Suchin arrived at the laboratory, only to find the boy there, who happened to be a member of the pet show. The boy reminded Suchin to flee without involving him if he encountered an enemy. 
However, the boy was incredibly swift and managed to capture him. He compared the nest pest to the impressive scorpion girl that Suchin had encountered previously. When asked about Doa, the boy disappointedly revealed that he had left the lab. This revelation led to a confrontation between the two. Meanwhile, Hyos Young remained imprisoned, surrounded by numerous other insect men, one of whom, named Hyacian Kang, tended to his injured shoulder. All of them fell victim to a potent concoction known as jungle juice. They were captured by monstrous creatures on the opposite side of the fence, creatures that thrived on a diet of human flesh and insects. In a surprising turn of events, the owner of the fish house arrived to select a human insect to satiate the monster's hunger. Hyus Young was taken aback when he witnessed this, as the owner chose an elderly man as the offering. Hyacian, filled with anger, confronted everyone present, questioning why they hadn't come to his aid. He informed them that they possessed insect-like abilities and could defeat the monsters. However, their fear and weakness prevented them from fighting back. Despite this, he urged them to at least attempt to fight, emphasizing that they had a chance because of a word that held power for them. Nest. Using his expertise, he swiftly broke the chain on the other side, allowing for a quicker escape. Hei Jin, wearing specialized park glasses, was searching for Dowa when he encountered the human insects who had transformed into monsters. Su Chan sent him a message, informing him that the dock was a trap. Unfortunately, He Jin lost signal on his phone and couldn't contact him. As the battle commenced between He Jin and the monsters, Hyanbin arrived and used his smoke-based abilities to disorient the creatures. Being a tobacco hawk moth, he possessed unique powers. The two of them discussed the message from Su Chan when suddenly a horde of monsters appeared, ready to engage in a fight with all of them. While Su Chan and a young boy were at the pier, engaged in a heated fight, the boy claimed that all the pests and monsters in the nest were identical. He mentioned that the nest had passed a Cinderella potion, causing the monster who desired to meet him to become furious. However, Su Chan vehemently disagreed, asserting that they were not the same. In a fit of anger, he punched the boy with full force, nearly overpowering him. Subsequently, Su Chan hurried into the laboratory in search of Hyacian and Doa. Surprisingly, he returned with increased strength, utilizing his complex abilities to grow a clamp on his body. With his shoulder transformed into a doodlebuck, he proceeded to bury Su Chan under the sand, rendering him unable to free himself. Su Chan revealed that Gay and Sin had assigned him this task. As he approached the sheep and opened the door, the tide surged in, indicating his intention to escape the laboratory as a breeder. Meanwhile, Suchin had been sinking in the water for the past thirty minutes, while Hyo's young attempted to break the fence but failed. Just as the other insects began to lose hope, Hyacian Cain suddenly arrived, inspiring himself by affirming that he could transform back into a regular human if he managed to escape. In a fortuitous turn of events, he accidentally unleashed his powers, prompting the other insect humans to realize that they too possessed abilities and could escape from their confinement. They were all highly motivated. The monster appeared, but they bravely fought and defeated it within seconds. They hurried towards the Hyacian door. Peering out the window, they saw all the monsters drowning. He tried to stop the boy, but he had already opened the floodgates and entered the room. Fear gripped them as the lab was flooded by the tide. They rushed towards an empty room attempting to lock the door, but failed as the water level rose. Hope seemed lost as the water continued to rise, but suddenly it began to recede. Water gushed out of the pipe connected to the drainage system. Delwa and Suchin emerged, along with Doa and Hayashian, as the monster fought fiercely. Losing his special glasses, the monster gained new powers and became uncontrollable. He posed a significant challenge, but Doa and Hyacian managed to escape the lab with the other insect humans. Park Heejin and Hyanbin arrived, overjoyed to see them and astonished by the presence of so many insect people. Suddenly, one of them stumbled and fell, causing a commotion. The monster unleashed a sand trick. Min instructed everyone to seek shelter inside the smoke cylinder to protect them from the sandstorm. Su Chan chased after the monster while Huigin hesitated between stopping or aiding him. Hyun Min intervened, preventing her from interfering. 
Disagreeing with So Hyun, Min experienced hallucinations, while Hyu's young discovered the special glasses and attempted to return them to her, knowing that covering the animal's eyes would calm them. He managed to escape the smoke with the assistance of another Hyacian who pursued him and handed him his glasses. Sushan expressed his gratitude as he could now see everything clearly. Suchan returned to his normal state, but suddenly, monsters appeared and abducted the supreme being. Yong attempted to chase after them, but failed to catch them. The monster warned him to stay away if he valued his well-being. Losing track of them, the monster transported Yong to the opposite side of the island to ensure no interference. He explained that they would engage in a deadly battle, as it was the true law of the jungle. Utilizing his sand trick, Suchan attempted to bury the monster, but the Hyacian arrived at that very moment. As Hui Jin regained consciousness, he immediately inquired about Suchan from Hyun Bin. However, numerous additional monsters emerged, and Hyun Men could no longer hallucinate them due to his depleted cigarette supply. Their only option was to confront the monsters head on. Meanwhile, the monsters were taken aback by Hyus Young's determination as he traversed the entire island to rescue Suchan. The intense fight between Suchan and the monster, which almost led to its defeat. Meanwhile, the group continued to battle against the monsters. Pianman emphasized that simply attacking was not enough to save them, as the monster's feeding training strengthened their exoskeletons. However, they could amputate, destroy, or even burn them. Park Heejin received training in combat techniques based on Juju from Professor John Jai, utilizing all his skills to kill the human insect monster. Everyone was amazed by his strength and abilities. Bella also used her ultimate defense mechanism to eliminate the monster, leaving the other insect humans in awe. They recalled Heos Young's earlier advice and felt motivated to join the fight. After successfully defeating all the monsters, Hyun Min urged everyone to hurry and assist Su Chan before daybreak, as they couldn't risk the lives of the townspeople. They decided to hide like skilled individuals and headed to Black Island Wharf at Hyacian Beach. Kang encountered his grandfather, but to his dismay, the man did not recognize him through the binoculars. He felt like a stranger to his own grandfather, who insisted that his grandson had never returned. Despite his failing memory, the old man claimed that he could recognize his grandson by his voice and manner of speaking. They both began to cry and embrace each other. The top security agent arrived at the pet shop laboratory and commenced inspecting the facility. Agent V2 reported that some monsters had drowned, but a few were still alive, so they needed to immobilize them with stingers. Suddenly they stumbled upon a hidden vault that was already open, revealing numerous monster corpses. At the pier, the school dispatched a ferry large enough to transport all the insect humans, most of whom were taken under the care of the nest. Young Kang, however, did not want to accompany them as he wished to stay with his grandfather. After bidding farewell to them, pious Young and the others headed to the nest. The pet shop safehouse assistant and the lab assistant approached the breeder, informing him that the antlion had been captured. The breeder assured them that he had fulfilled his duty and it was acceptable to remove the predator from the premises. Dismantling the lab was a crucial task, and he successfully completed it. Kianbin briefed the professors on the events at Black Island, revealing that they had apprehended one of the pet shop members along with 21 trained feed specimens from their lab. Professor Ma stated that the mission's objective was to explore the island. He mentioned that their covers had been blown, necessitating them to fend for themselves, he also highlighted Hyacian Cha's significant contribution in locating Professor Junji's lab. Impressed, Professor Ma commended their dedication, and Chang Hoon approached the group to congratulate them on their success in the previous mission. Despite the events that transpired, he felt the need to apologize to them. He was informed that he should apologize to Hyus Young and the girls for his brutal behavior. Shang Hoon decided to take Su Chan and the youngest girl to a bar for a blind date. He explained to them that not only the girls who were hurt, but also the smartest one, who happened to be at the top of Professor Yu's class, should thank him for organizing the party. They all began drinking and eating. However, Su Chan reached her limit and suddenly pretended to faint. Shang Hoon and the other two girls urged Su Chan to drive them home. 
They parked the car and Hee Jin arrived at the bar, questioning what had happened. Meanwhile, she told him that if he wanted to know the reason behind his actions, he should accompany her. She took him to the lab, where she made him sit down and removed his shirt to collect a DNA sample. Suddenly, Park Hee Jin arrived at the lab. She informed them that she knew everything and took a blood sample from Su Chan for DNA testing. She explained that Professor Yu had instructed her to do so. Park Hee Jin showed compassion towards Su Chan, obtained the DNA sample, and chased after Park Hee Jin while Su Chan headed towards the dormitory. Su Chan desired to have a conversation with her, but unfortunately she did not respond positively. He sensed that she was upset with him. In an attempt to reconcile, he offered her a drink, but she declined. He then informed her that he went back to his room to have a drink with DOA. However, upon reaching the room, they were surprised to find the entire class engaged in a party. Su Chen decided to join in and have a drink with them. Meanwhile, Professor Anda informed Professor Jun that the test results confirmed that Su Chen was a walking bomb and needed to be isolated for the safety of everyone. However, Professor Jun intervened, requesting not to isolate Su Chen as he did not want him to be alone. He assured that he would take care of him since he was his professor. Professor Jun warned that if Su Chen did not control himself, he would intervene. On the other hand, the breeder approached the monster and offered assistance in killing the professor, as he was seen as a major obstacle. They planned to devise a scheme to execute the professor. Meanwhile, in the forest, Professor John contacted Su Chen and informed him that the school had classified him as a violent threat. This news shocked Su Chen, and suddenly, Professor John attacked him, resulting in his death. Despite being severely injured, Su Chen refrained from retaliating against the professor. He was confused as to why the professor had acted in such a manner. Professor John explained that he had lost control during the fight. He also informed him that Gay and Sin had done the same thing five years ago when they couldn't control their anger, resulting in the tragic deaths of their classmates. They became monsters. He mentioned that he had heard a similar incident had happened to Hu Chen, so he believed he needed to kill him in order to save everyone in the nest. The faculty members and the dean witnessed all of this through a video of Professor John attacking him mercilessly. Su Chen vehemently declared that he did not belong to the category of monsters and never wanted to become one. Suddenly, Hianbin appeared and hallucinated him. Professor John wanted to prove that he was not like gay and sin. After some time, he regained consciousness in the hospital, with all his wounds healed by the professor. Professor John explained that he had done all of this to protect him and fought with him to demonstrate to the school that he was not a threat. He assured Su Chen that he was the strongest individual in that place. A few hours ago, Professor Jun had informed the class that the lecture for the day would focus on strengthening their weaknesses. Each student would receive an individual challenge, and they would have one week to complete it. The professor analyzed everyone's weaknesses and strengths, documenting them in a book. It was mandatory for all of them to work on improving their weaknesses. All classes at the nest are conducted by trained field professors who individually assess the students, highlighting their strengths and weaknesses and assigning challenges accordingly. The dedicated young student, lacking technical skills, must demonstrate his abilities by cutting all the balls with a knife attached to his foot. Yunji Jiang faces a unique challenge with a stubborn mole cricket that needs to be tamed. His nails are so strong that they can penetrate concrete slabs, making it difficult for him to find a stable footing. Don Jiang must work on building his stamina to wield an iron mace effectively as he aims to swing a 220-pound wrecking ball. While everyone received their challenges from the professor, Su Chen was approached separately and instructed to meet with him after class for a special task. As Su Chen and Professor John were alone in the basement, a praying mantis suddenly appeared to engage in a battle. Professor John and his assistant observed the challenge from a distance as Su Chen was tasked with defeating his natural enemy by disabling one of its arms. In order to ensure a fair fight, Professor John provided a prosthetic limb for the praying mantis to level the playing field. They both initiated the altercation, but Su Chen was unable to overcome his opponent due to his sturdy skeleton. In a sudden move, he raised his hand and requested the professor for a brief intermission. 
he swiftly fled from the scene. Meanwhile, she sought assistance from her friends and classmates, borrowing their specialized weapons in her quest for victory. The praying mantis proved to be a formidable adversary, but she devised a cunning strategy to eliminate it using her powerful weapon. After some time, he returned and attempted to utilize Dawn's mace, but his lack of proficiency hindered his success. He then tried Hanasion's tranquilizer weapon, only to face defeat once again. Numerous attempts were made using Big in Park's Blackthorn Knuckles with various strategies, but all ended in failure. The first day of the assignment concluded, leaving him pondering in the marketplace, contemplating how to conquer the praying mantis. Suddenly, he noticed a peculiar item in a store. It triggered his memory, reminding him of the glasses he had crafted. He approached the store owner and sought their assistance on the final day of the individual challenge. As the students gathered on the ground, Sushan unexpectedly arrived and informed the professor that he was prepared for the challenge. A few days ago, Suchan and Bitten were seated together in a cafe. He approached her for assistance in adjusting her glasses to alleviate her motion sickness. However, he informed him that it was not feasible as the lenses and glasses enhanced her vision and functioned similarly to an actual dragonfly. He questioned the need to fix the glasses when she could overcome her motion sickness. In the park, she arrived with some items that had been bitten, explaining that she experienced discomfort due to conflicting signals received by her brain. Consequently, he aimed to teach her how to attain equilibrium between her physical senses. Initially, she attempted to fly in a rotational motion, but he altered her movements. Despite initial failures, she persisted and eventually succeeded, realizing that more practice was necessary. A few days later, the final day of the individual challenge arrived, and everyone gathered in the basement to witness Suchan in action. Professor Jun had warned him during the battle with the praying mantis that this was his last chance to prove himself. Sushan, armed with a pair of tactical knuckle guard gloves as a reward from his midterm exam, faced his opponent. With a display of increased power and skill, he managed to defeat his adversary, surprising everyone with his abilities. However, the tables turned when the praying mantis retaliated and overpowered Suchin, leaving him unable to move. As tension filled the room, someone attempted to help Suchin, only to be stopped by Professor Jun. The professor revealed that the true challenge had just begun as the praying mantis intended to kill Suchin. Despite the brutal attack, Professor Jun remained calm, emphasizing the importance of maintaining control to avoid being consumed by the primal instincts within. As Suchan's violent tendencies resurfaced, Professor Jun feared that he was losing control. Despite appearing to gain the upper hand in the battle, it was evident that something was amiss. The professor urged caution, recognizing that Suchan's instincts threatened to overpower his rationality. Though the situation seemed dire, Professor Jun remained hopeful that Suchan could still overcome the darkness within him. Suchan's screams echoed as the monster tried to force him to consume his own flesh, but Min Hyung intervened by opening the door and rushing to rescue Suchan. The flashback scene unfolded, showing Suchan and Park Hee Jin sitting together, promising to never part ways, even if one of them were to turn into a normal human being. The sudden turn of events led to Suchan denying his monstrous identity and striking the praying mantis. Professor Jun congratulated him on passing the challenge, while the breeder sent his predators back to Nest's training ground. The individual challenges continued, with most participants performing well, although some did not succeed. Su Chan, who was undergoing treatment in the hospital, missed out on the midterm assignment. Park Hee Jin, with some free time on her hands, decided to visit Su Chan, only to find him bound and restrained. Kiona warned Hui Jin to be cautious, as danger lurked everywhere and could strike at any moment. Professor John enters the classroom abruptly and informs us that the school has declared it safe. All we witnessed were the adverse effects of a concoction known as jungle juice. These effects manifest in individuals whose DNA closely resembles that of insects, such as Suchin and Gay and Sin, as all organisms share a certain percentage of common DNA. Rats, for instance, exhibit a 90% similarity in DNA with humans. The professor proceeds to reveal that Gay and Sin is Nest's student, a brilliant and passionate individual whom she holds in high regard. Despite other students mocking him, 
claiming that he manipulates the professor to secure good grades due to his alleged mind control complex. He generally avoids conflicts. However, one day, his complex spirals out of control, resulting in numerous casualties. Unlike him, Suchin possesses the ability to manage his anger. He proudly announces to the class that he is a contender for the valedictorian position. Suchin was reflecting on Professor Jun after class when suddenly an explosion rocked the research building. The predator breeders were now prepared to attack. Haman rushed into Professor Jun's room, finding him unharmed, but sadly, the boy who had come for registration had died. Another explosion followed, prompting a state of emergency across the campus. All students sought refuge in a safe location as the nest of predators invaded the building. The focus of the nest shifted to the inner campus due to the explosion, resulting in the death of anyone who stood in their way. Professor Ma instructed the nest's security team guards to seal all exits of Park Hee Jin, suspecting that something was amiss. When the guardians arrived, a Maiwa predator girl appeared and, using her Manti prayer complex, began attacking and killing them. As the humans escorted Professor John out of the building to seek medical attention due to his deteriorating health, an old predator approached him for a conversation. Despite Professor John's knowledge of the monster's true nature, he urged the humans not to intervene. However, they stood in defiance. While the breeder reveled in the revelation that the predator was indeed a monster, Miwa continued her killing spree. She targeted Huygen, but Sushan intervened just in time. Employing her own complex, she managed to defeat the monster, who had anticipated her moves and wore a mask to prevent her from hallucinating. Hyunbin's curiosity about his complex led to a fight, during which he revealed his ability to cause explosions at will. Concerned about the safety of the students, she tried to intervene. Suchan and she were surprised to see the girl's calm demeanor after causing harm. Huygen prevented him from attacking her, recognizing his uniqueness. Heejin attempted to strike, but she swiftly defeated him. Despite his strength, they failed to kill him due to his resilience. Miwa, a predator accustomed to harsh conditions, targeted Huichin and managed to injure him. Fiona saved Suchin by using her silk to restrain him. Despite their combined efforts, the opponent proved to be a formidable challenge. He once again endured a significant blow, but managed to recover repeatedly, just as he had done before. Professor Jen informed him about her unique complex, revealing that Professor Yu had conducted experiments on him. The results showed that he had been injected with approximately 1,000 cockroaches, granting him a rare power that he could tap into whenever necessary. She demonstrated her immense strength by surviving an atomic explosion unscathed. Despite being engaged in a battle, she quickly bounced back from any injury sustained. She promptly informed her superior that the task had been accomplished. Encountering an individual with an unusual complex, he advised him to rendezvous with the elderly gentleman after diverting enough attention. Sutton let out a scream, visibly shaken, as Huijin instructed her to pursue him, assuring her that she would follow suit. She proceeded to transport the wounded agent to the hospital while DOA and Hayus Young arrived on the scene. Another female predator emerged, sparking a confrontation between the two. Flex Fian Man attempted to disorient the creature with his smoke, but failed as it advanced towards Professor John with lethal intent. The human discovered the true purpose of the monster's presence to eliminate Professor John. Despite his efforts to thwart the attack once more, he was unsuccessful. She harnessed her unique abilities to vanquish the foe, lighting up a Nest's special lab cigarette and initiating a transformation. In the past, the professor had forbidden her from smoking on campus, offering his office as a designated smoking area instead. However, she recognized that the moment had arrived to unleash her powers. The final line of defense, the exploding ants, sprang into action as she ignited fireworks to subdue and wound the monster. While Suchun lost Miwa, Fionbin thrived. She was a dark demon who launched an attack. Almost succeeding in killing her, he was interrupted by Miwa, who struck him. Injured and barely able to move, Miwa explained that the boss instructed her to assist him, promising to take care of the professor while he dealt with the children. However, Sushan arrived, prompting a discussion about the need to capture him. Hyunmin revealed that they were responsible for the explosion, 
having planted explosives in the specimens from Black Island. Enraged, Fionn been engaged in a fight with Suchin, who knew that avoiding contact with his arm would lead to victory. The humans intervened to prevent Suchin from losing control and becoming a threat to everyone present. They urged him to leave with Professor John to ensure his safety. Miwa urged the old man to hasten, warning that more enemies would arrive if they delayed. Despite a failed attempt to detonate, Fionbin expressed gratitude for the information provided by Miwa. He proceeded to plant explosives among Professor Ma's followers, as discussed with the Guardian earlier. Depicts a tense situation on the campus, with guards being on high alert. They had removed all the bombs that the old monster had mentioned, underestimating Nest's capabilities. However, their focus shifted to eliminating Hyambin when suddenly Su Chan appeared with a pack of cigarettes. He distributed them to the humans, claiming that it could induce hallucinations and help control the situation. Meanwhile, Hyo Young and he engaged in a fierce battle with another formidable monster woman. Despite their efforts, they were unable to defeat her due to her impenetrable armor, which was stronger than steel. The monstrous retaliated by using her ultimate defense and attacking him with acidic liquid, temporarily impairing his vision. This gave her an opportunity to launch successive attacks. As the sandback monster had mentioned to Noah, it was unfortunate that he was considered one of the breeder's pets, as he proved to be weak and unable to defend himself. Amidst the chaos, Hayatian intervened by kicking the monstrous, providing some relief. Doha, gathering all her strength, poisoned the monster woman with her potent venom, causing her to bleed profusely. This venom was particularly potent as Doha had been given a different poison than other insect people, enhancing her strength. In the battle against the monster, she utilized her defense mechanism and unleashed her acid on Hu Yung. However, DOA managed to revive him. Although she temporarily lost her vision, she persisted and launched an attack, but unfortunately failed to defeat the monster. Meanwhile, on the other side, Su Chan engaged in a fierce fight with the old monster. Their attacks were relentless. Hyunbin attempted to disorient them with his smoke, but Niwa countered with her defense mechanism, dispersing all the smoke. She then seized Su Chan from behind and pulled him away. She explained to him that their leader had instructed them to kill him if they couldn't capture him alive, as his flesh is considered delicious. Hyun Bin warned Su Chan about the severe side effects of the complex, suggesting that using his anger might be the only way to overcome their adversaries. If they didn't stop them, everyone would be killed. Su Chan agreed, but just as they were about to proceed, Professor John intervened and halted their plan. He urged them not to sacrifice themselves, as he had already considered their future in the graduate program. Professor John instructed Yanbin and Suchin to rest, assuring them that he would confront the enemies alone and launch the first attack. However, during the fight, the professor was able to overpower him and throw him aside. He vanquished the mantis before launching an assault on the elderly monster, overpowering it. Attaching his troops to the professor's body upon contact, the troops began to grow during the skirmish, eventually detonating and posing a lethal threat. Professor Jun admonished them for crossing a forbidden boundary and declared them unworthy of life. Employing the Bombardier Beetle's ultimate defense mechanism, he incinerated all the troopers with scorching heat they could not endure, swiftly defeating them. Subsequently, black smoke emanated from his arm, alarming Hyombin, who warned Suchin of the peril. This resulted in severe side effects for him, causing him to suddenly collapse. The professor explained that the excessive smoke usage was the cause of the side effects. In that moment, two monsters emerged and launched an attack on Professor John, with one of them wielding a mantis to harm him. The elderly monster affixed the troopers to Miwa's body, causing her to explode in an attempt to aid the professor, but she was ultimately crushed beneath a stone. Park Heejin hurried towards the door, as she had an urgent task to attend to. The guardian entrusted her with a key and instructed her to visit the dean's residence in the nearby mountains to relay the situation. He emphasized the importance of going for Nest's sake, while the elderly monster and Professor Jen conversed about the intricate complexities at play. These complexities had a profound impact on the brain, triggering a severe bodily reaction if not properly managed. 
Reflecting on his past, Professor John recalled his decision to withhold the complex from Gayen due to its potential dangers, which unfortunately led to the demise of numerous students. The altercation resumed once more. The elderly man informed the professor of his impending demise. Predator utilized his developing stinger complex to eliminate the professor, informing Suchin that this would be their final special lesson and that he would witness his true power. Professor John employed his final defense mechanism to overcome them. The nuclear explosion occurred, with everyone witnessing the brilliant light from the incredible blast. Regrettably, Miwa survived due to her partner shielding her, although her partner sustained injuries. Suchan was deeply impressed by the professor's actions. Professor John presented Miwa with the option of peacefully surrendering herself or facing death. She discussed this with her leader. The leader now informs her that he understands the consequences if she chooses not to fight, as she does not wish to be alone. She engages in combat with the professor. Professor John discovers that he is a cockroach. As his wound heals, he acquires the same complex as Park Heejin. It is a cockroach versus locust scenario, while the other predator girl enters the emergency room, informing the professor that she will depart as she pleases. Suddenly, the monster girl arrives and eliminates her, taking her ID to gain access to the emergency room. Meanwhile, the professor struggles against Miwa. He prepares to activate his defense mechanism but falters, injuring his hand. He believes that Gayen will now be content. Miwa kills the professor, informing her leader that her mission has been accomplished. Su Chan blames himself, believing he was the cause of the professor's demise. The professor consistently supported him and utilized his unique abilities to rescue her on numerous occasions. He believes that he is the key factor in their victories over the professor. Miho attempts to leave, but he halts her, insisting that it is not yet over. Employing his special abilities, he engages in combat with her as the monstrous woman enters the laboratory where the robots are stored. Suddenly, he notices a file on the table containing the DNA analysis report of Sucha. Meanwhile, Suchin battles Miwa, viewing her as another subject of the feeding experiment. In the laboratory, he behaves like a wild animal that has lost its sanity. He tries to manipulate her into consuming meat by forcibly grabbing the girl from the nest. He launches a full-scale attack on her, vehemently denying that he is a monster, while the monstrous girl observes. The DNA report reveals that he is not an ordinary dragonfly, but rather a colossal one. Conversely, Miwa points out that he exhibits the same malevolent instincts as the feeding experiment subjects, yet retains full control over his mind. Suchin employs the giant dragonfly's ultimate defense mechanism, known as the hunter power, to eliminate Miwa. Engaging in a battle with Miwa, he pleads for her mercy. He is intrigued by the prospect of enhancing his strength and speed, quickly developing the necessary skills. Recalling the leader's advice not to exhaust his energy, he taps into the potent cockroach power through his origins, as it is a borrowed ability that tenses his body. Severe injuries trigger his self-healing abilities, but continuous use drains his life force, ultimately leading to his demise. He desires to put an end to this situation due to his dwindling time. Attempting to eliminate him, he fails in his endeavor. Resorting once more to her hunting rifle, she nearly succeeds in taking him down. His recovery is prolonged as his energy is depleted. She confronts him about his actions against Professor John and the others, stating that she could end his life then and there, but refuses to stoop to their level. Despite his offer of sparing her life in exchange for surrender, she adamantly declines. She vows to persist in her pursuit, adamant about not reverting to her past. The situation is disheartening. If he were left with only one option, he would opt for death. Employing his defense mechanism, he strikes him, asserting that he has left him no alternative. Suddenly, the leader of the monsters intervenes, expressing surprise at the unique complexity of the specimens in the nest, and revealing that he had ordered the killing of Professor John. Su Chan is driven to eliminate the leader, attempting to capture him. However, the leader's remarkable speed outmatches him. The leader subdues Miwa and commends her hunting skills. Instructing her to keep her abilities hidden, she struggles with the conflicting emotions of anger towards the professor's death and the leader's nonchalant attitude. Despite her efforts, she is unable to defeat him due to his swift movements. The leader vanishes, 
only to reappear and launch a sudden attack on Suchin, resulting in a minor injury. The darkest hour commenced, and the leader's power grew. In the shadows, he relentlessly attacked Suchin, who could vanish at will. Suchan couldn't perceive the strikes in the darkness, rendering him unable to retaliate. The leader plunged his sword into Suchin's chest, wounding him. The leader informed him that predators could control themselves. Despite planning to kill him after training, a sudden force intervened and eliminated the leader. Huin arrived, relieved that she was unharmed. Su Chan urged her to leave due to the danger they posed. They eliminated the professor, and an elderly man inquired about Professor John. Park Hee Jin revealed that he was the dean, surprising the elderly man with his ability to read. The dean instructed them to prioritize killing Professor John, the primary target. He cautioned them that there were other threats to contend with before dealing with the professor. The graduate student, his assistant, posed a significant risk. Both class presidents, as Guyan mentioned, had their own alliance. However, they were off campus. Lastly, the head of the university nest and the dean targeted the leader, but he evaded the attack due to his speed. The dean was disappointed in his own decline in skill. As the battle raged on, the leader warned the dean that continuing would not bode well for either of them. He raised his voice, commanding the predator mission to halt all units and withdraw the monsters engaged in combat. DOA and Hyacian were planning to eliminate them. Hyacian grabbed a piece of rock with the intention of throwing it at them, but Jen Young intervened and saved them. Su Chan was reluctant to see him go, but Dean intervened and advised against pursuing them alone. Dean emphasized the futility of engaging in a senseless massacre. In the aftermath, there were 34 casualties, 50 injuries, and 15 damaged facilities. The Cinderella manufacturing plant was among the damaged sites, leaving the nest devoid of hope. On the other hand, Park Heejin rushed Professor John to the emergency room, with Su Chan joining them. They prayed for the professor, and after some time, the doctor emerged from the operating room. The doctor delivered the distressing news that Professor John was in a coma with significant internal organ damage. The doctor mentioned that immediate treatment could have made a difference, but Professor John was also injured while neutralizing the predator by identifying the neurotoxin. The following day, everyone gathered for class, but classes were temporarily suspended due to the recent incident. The incident weighed heavily on everyone's minds, leading to a somber atmosphere. Meanwhile, Park Heejin stood outside Professor Jun's room, reminiscing about the professor's past help and guidance. Suddenly, someone approached and inquired about a missing classmate. Park Heejin explained that he was visiting Professor Yu to inquire about the complex used against him. The individual advised Park Heejin to brace himself for what was to come. Everyone was still in class when suddenly Hyun Min arrived making an announcement that classes would soon resume as the nest would be hosting a guest professor. Additionally, the two Dunhills were now classmates. As she neutralized all the detained specimens and returned them to their respective units, the dean dismissed her and granted her full rights as a nest citizen. Suchin felt a deep sadness for losing Professor John, but then Young approached him and expressed his understanding. Young also informed him about another pet shop safe house. If she wished to join him, she could inform Jun Hyung. How could she believe it? She informed him that when she returned the monster to its unit, she found a caged red dragonfly. She called him, and he went to her. She explained that the nest was under attack by the predators. He also mentioned that the breeders resided in Sokcho and Gangwon provinces. Su Chin was just as surprised as the red dragonfly, who happened to work for the breeders. Now, she wanted to assist them. Jun Hyung warned that it sounded like a trap, and he shared the same concern. However, he assured her that he did not work for ranchers and had never received training in feeding practices. Guyan was encountered by her, and she willingly became his subordinate. She disclosed everything to me because she held a strong dislike for the breeder, who had a tendency to boss everyone around despite all the favors he had done for her. Moreover, she had no intention of helping him escape, so she seized the opportunity to catch him off guard. Additionally, she revealed that there was a spy within the faculty. Jen Hyung confirmed Su Chan's statement and expressed his reluctance to share their plan with anyone. 
However, DOA and Hyacian unexpectedly arrived and overheard their conversation, expressing their desire to join. They all convened at a cafe to strategize their sudden departure from the university. The class, as previously informed by the young boy, also joined their plan. Meanwhile, Parkhegian received the plan's details during their intense preparation call. The group fled from the nest, only to be apprehended by the Wasp Squad, the nest's security guards. They devised two escape plans for attending the sock show. In the first plan, Yunji would dig an underground tunnel. However, they underestimated the heavy security outside the school grounds. Fortunately, no one was caught by the Wasp troops. Suchin pointed out that sneaking out unnoticed was no longer an option, so they should proceed with Plan B as suggested by Chang Hoon. Professor Ma questioned why they went to such lengths to inform him, to which they explained that it was not an act of rebellion, but an attempt to go on a field trip. Despite the school's prohibition, they wanted to take a break. Professor Ma insisted that they couldn't leave under those circumstances. Unexpectedly, Dean arrived and granted them permission to travel, with Professor Ma's approval. The condition was that guards would accompany them. The following day, they embarked on their journey without worrying about spies. However, a guard overheard the students discussing Miss Moon's intelligence and the plan to let her go. The resort they arrived at was luxurious, and the girls were delighted by the pool. Chai Hoon reminded them of their purpose for being there and urged them to focus. Miss Moon enters the room and expresses concern about revealing their insect forms in public, prompting everyone to consider following her to the show. Sok Jun Hyung attempts to use Venom to incapacitate her from behind, but his plan fails. Despite their initial hesitation, they decide to try blinding her with a small amount of Venom. However, this also proves unsuccessful as she defends herself with a water weapon. Despite their various attempts to stop her, she always manages to evade them. At one point, they try to subdue her while she sleeps, but she outsmarts them each time. Despite the challenges, they refuse to give up hope and seek revenge for Professor John. Park Hee Jin comes up with a final plan, offering Miss Moon champagne laced with sleeping pills. Although Miss Moon suspects foul play, she decides to take a sip, only to find herself hypnotized and unable to recall anything that transpired. The group, along with Jen Hill, was prepared to depart for the show. Dawn and Hyona also decided to join them. Chang Hoon informed them that they should return in the morning as Miss Moon would be under hypnosis and asleep for a while. Inhio discussed their plans for attending the sock show. Unexpectedly, Jen Hyung arrived in a car. She had regained her license while working at the orphanage for ranchers. John Hyung mentioned that they were going to that place and would be personally taken care of by the breeder, so they were unsure of what to expect. If anything went wrong, they could face danger or be trained by them, but she believed they could handle it. Meanwhile, the assistant at the lab was on the phone with the breeder. She assured him that everything was fine on her end and informed them that the old man was injured but had been given painkillers. The breeder mentioned that they no longer needed Cinderella's belongings, so he disposed of them. Suddenly, Suchin arrived and dropped off the lab assistant. He called security to eliminate them, but DOA intervened and fought against them, intending to kill them. He mentioned the existence of specimens in the basement and inquired about the whereabouts of the breeder and predator to the lab assistant, but Park Heejin dismissed it. Chang Hoon retained the Cinderella formula obtained from the lab. Hyun Young acquired a significant amount of Cinderella juice when suddenly alarms sounded while Fiona and Dawn waited outside. The old man abruptly opened his eyes approached Fiona and Dawn, and instructed them to descend. Another explosion occurred, causing the ceiling to collapse. Panic ensued as everyone started to run. Huijin suggested rescuing the missing assistant due to his knowledge of the situation. With that, he grabbed a rock and everyone fled. Out of nowhere, the old monster appeared and attacked him. While outside the park, Heejin inquired about everyone's well-being and assured them that she would return to fetch Suchin, who was still there. Suddenly, numerous monsters emerged, appearing to be experimental subjects. As they pondered their sudden appearance, an elderly monster emerged and claimed responsibility for their release. However, it was revealed that he was the one who attacked the nest and attempted to harm Professor John.
Enraged, the group attacked him, but halted when one of the monsters restrained Suchan. The elderly monster explained that he sought revenge for the pain he endured since the attack, intending to eliminate the valuable students. Professor Jun Foyden expressed his desire to witness the outcome. Attempting to eliminate him, the group attacked Hujin, seemingly defeating him. As he threatened the next victim, Fujin challenged him to try and fail, unaware of Hee-jin's healing abilities. Despite numerous attempts, the old monster could not succeed in killing her, realizing she possessed a self-healing mechanism like Miwa. Placing her trooper on Hujin's body, she detonated it, believing she had vanquished him. However, he revealed that he had placed the trooper on the ground and initiated an explosion, warning them of their helplessness. He taunts them by claiming they are all weak students of a weak professor. Suddenly, Park Heejin arrives and grabs his arm as she did before. Hyun Min informs her that he controls everything with his arm. Park Heejin calls for Hayashin to sever his arm so they can defeat him. The old monster kicks them and commands all the monsters to attack. He flees the scene while Huygen reassures the others that they can handle the monsters and he will pursue him. The predator charges forward and is astonished by their knowledge of their lair. Huygen approaches and strikes him forcefully. He warns Park Heejin that he cannot regenerate indefinitely. He vows to unleash his army and destroy her soul. Victory seems assured for him. She takes Professor Jun's saw and severs his arm. He challenges Hua Zhan, questioning if she truly believes she can defeat him. He reveals that the feed trainer was a specimen that once belonged to the original monster's leg. Meanwhile, Noah hears a noise approaching and urgently warns them to flee. Fear grips everyone as the largest creature approaches. The ground shakes as the breeder's largest pet arrives. Suchin is stunned when he opens his eyes. Amidst the tremors, he beholds a colossal monster. Suchin realizes it is the breeder's voice controlling the monster named Gigantia, observing everything. She confesses to Suchin that she had always wanted him in her group, but now acknowledges their fundamental differences and past conflicts. He commanded the Gigantia to eliminate them. Fear gripped everyone as there was no way to escape now. Despite their best efforts, they were unable to overcome the Gigantia. The devout young boy attempted to wound him with his sword, but it was merely a scratch due to his immense size, making it impossible to defeat him. Suchin soared high out of reach of the monster, who then descended to attack Hyona. She used her defensive skills to protect herself. Fugin explained to Suchin that the Gigantia was hungry and only sought to consume everything, urging them to halt their actions before the monster reached the city. Suchin devised a plan to lead the Gigantia to Logan Rock. As Huijin alerted everyone to the vast landscape, they evacuated the city and sought safety. The plan unfolded smoothly, prompting the city's evacuation while the rancher sent his trained animals to the exhibition. Suchin persisted in guiding the Gigantia to Logan Rock. Park Heejin cautioned him about the danger involved, emphasizing the need for unconventional thinking to defeat the creature. Jen Hill warned of centipedes lurking nearby, capable of disrupting their plans by attracting the Gigantia. Their mission was to vanquish the monster, hence they had come prepared to face this challenge. Suchan wielded his intricate weapon and struck Gigantia with a powerful blow. Meanwhile, Hyacian sliced the stone and hurled it towards the monster, while DOA utilized his complex to vanquish it. Their combined efforts dealt a devastating blow to Gigantia, leaving them aware that the situation could be resolved if Gigantia consumed a small amount of meat. Bringing Gigantia close to the statue, Suchan believed he could defeat it there and instructed everyone to prepare themselves. Fiona spun the tangled thread, ensnaring Gigantia within it like a cat in a cradle, but warned Suchin that she couldn't maintain the hold for long. Park Heejin produced a saw, and Professor Jun began to cut Gigantia into pieces. Despite Suchin calling for DOA and Hyacian's assistance, they were preoccupied with the monsters that surrounded them. These monsters had been trained as weapons for the battle against Suchan, with Fiona and Hui Jin also struggling to restrain Gigantia. Although the monster breeders commended their efforts, it proved insufficient to penetrate Gigantia's tough outer skin. Gigantia struck Suchin, but he managed to halt the attack with sheer force, demonstrating that he was not a monster but a human, the most formidable type of creature. 
Fiona skillfully wound the thread around the monster, eventually resorting to her ultimate defense mechanism of the giant dragonfly. She transformed into a skilled hunter, aiming not for the Gigantia itself, but for the head of the statue. An explosion ensued, nearly taking down the Gigantia, but it miraculously revived. Fiona and Huygen sprinted away with Gigantia trailing behind, seemingly assisting them. However, Huygen pointed out the monster's weakness, urging Fiona to hold it off. He then began to saw at the monster, inching closer to defeating it. Just in time, her ally, Moon, intervened and revealed that Professor Moss had sent her for this very purpose. Suchen inquired about her sudden appearance, to which she explained that her colleagues at the resort had informed her, along with a distress call for help at their current location. Jun Hyung responded to the call for help, arriving just in time to witness DOA and Hu Young struggling with the monster. Utilizing his ultimate defense mechanism, the Tranula, he unleashed a lethal dose of venom, swiftly eliminating all the monsters. Meanwhile, Sushan employed all his defense mechanisms to combat the monster, while Fiona attacked it with her flowing hair from the hunting rifle and delivered a powerful blow with the hunter's strength, rendering the monster unconscious. The breeder was thoroughly impressed with her skills. As he slays his largest pet, he finally defeats the monster, but suddenly pills appear and scratch his face. Phil feeds Suchin with meat in order for him to transform into a monster. Park Heejin approaches him and advises him that he can still vomit because it is not too late. Suchan explains that after he finishes eating and swallows, he craves meat and transforms into a monster. Suchan begins to transform as his humanity fades away. He attacks Huygen, but Hyona intervenes. Miss Moon wants to eliminate Suchan and urges Huijin to leave her, as she does not want him to lose his student. As he begins to lose control, he attempts to restrain her but fails. Then he throws Miss Moon aside and moves towards Fiona to attack her. Hui Jin steps in and prevents him from harming anyone. He bites Park Hee Jin, and onlookers witness his transformation. John Hyung states that if Su Chen feeds, it will be his downfall, and he will become one of the breeder's possessions. Miss Moon attacks Su Chen and declares that there is no hope for him anymore. She was about to kill him, but Park Hee Jin intervenes and takes the blow instead. We need to find a way to regain our humanity. She appears pleased that Suchin is unable to handle the situation. He takes flight and is now heading towards the DOA, but suddenly there is an explosion. Despite consuming his prey, he manages to resist his instinctual desires and regain control. The breeder is so shocked that he feeds Suchin, but instantly realizes the scent of another prey. The breeder orders a pill to escape, but Jun Hyung bites him. He tells Su Chan that he cannot hold back forever from attending class and pursuing Cinderella, so he should just sit and watch. Park Hee Jin calls out to Su Chan, but he refrains from holding back due to the overwhelming scent. Suddenly, the Nest helicopter arrives with Wasp Squadron and Ant Squadron, accompanied by the professor's mother. They secure the area, preventing civilian access. The professor informs Su Chan that he has been monitoring everything and it seems that she has successfully fed and controlled herself. She asks him if she is ready for what lies ahead, as she knows that people at the nest will tease her, so she must maintain control. Afterwards, he administers an injection called Pumpkin Carriage, which contains a small amount of Cinderella. This serum helps suppress the human appetite and sense of smell. Suchin observes everything clearly without any scent. They all head towards the nest and undergo some tests. Su Chan and his group made their way back to the classroom, only to be confronted by three students on the road. Hong Yi, Xiang Hyunk, and Wu Geno, the valedictorian seniors at the nest, were part of a social club known as the Propolis Group. As seniors, they had the authority to maintain order on campus. When Su Chan attempted to fight them, DOA intervened, reminding them that fighting on school grounds was against the rules. Despite this, the seniors insisted that Su Chan prove himself worthy by engaging in a fight. Young, the one who stopped the altercation, cited Article 18 of the Nest's Code of Conduct, which allowed Propolis members to enforce order. In the end, Su Chan's classmates were released, but he became the subject of ridicule among the students. Young informed Huygen that he had heard he would be a candidate for the freshman farewell speech at the club. Iseong observed that WBU's gun bullet had caused a wound. 
She was aware that Su Chan was responsible for it. She informed her group about her decision and expressed her desire to include Su Chan in their group. Meanwhile, the reader was relaxing in the pool, reflecting on the recent fight. Guyan approached and joined the reader. The rancher, who was imprisoned, was named Wu Jin Quan, the governor of Gangwon province. He approached her and requested her to work as a spy for him. He returned his predators to their nest. They all had a common goal of eliminating the pests in the nest. The rancher disclosed his pet shop to Guyan and revealed that Professor John was not human. He mentioned that he could take care of him himself, despite the advanced technology and doctors available. However, there was no sign of Professor John waking up as he remained in a coma. Everyone had a great time during their summer vacation. John Hewn wanted to show Noah the pictures of the children from the orphanage. Hyacian felt a bit jealous, while Park Hee Jin and Su Chan sat together and enjoyed their drinks. Su Chan mentioned that sometimes she experienced the effects of eating. She playfully put her finger in his mouth and told him that if he ever felt the urge to bite someone, he could bite her instead. They shared a warm embrace. The holidays came to an end, and the new semester began. Both John Hyun and Su Chan excelled academically and became top-ranked students. They were now proud members of Propolis,